today we are installing these MaxBoost uh, Palladium camper kit and this is to alleviate the known issue with rear tire wear on the uh, Model S plaids. Um, they have a uh, camber issue, negative camber issue, where the tires sit when the vehicle's in low, uh, kind of inwards, and it's putting all the pressure on the inside of the tire. So what happens is it wears that out very quickly and you have blowouts and things like that. So it's kind of a safety issue as well. Um, it's a known issue. Uh, this takes away, I guess, 0.8 degrees or one degree of camber, and it allows you to put everything else uh, based on the instructions kind of back to stock settings so you don't need an alignment following this. Uh, cost $250, it's basically two steel plates. There's not much to it. You're pulling off two bolts and you're prying, you're sliding these in and bolting it up. Um, but I've seen on the forums, there has been a lot of talk about, you know, there ain't being any videos, how-tos, and even though it's simple, the instructions are pretty simple, uh, this might be helpful for some that want to do it, kind of at least visualize before they're doing it, kind of what problems they might run into. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is jack the vehicle up, uh, probably use jacks on each side. I'm fortunate I have a lift. Uh, but my um, inner piece, I have an inner jack, it only extends so far. And this car is pretty wide, so I don't think it's going to work. So I'll probably have to have a jack on this side and a jack on that side. They recommend jacking both sides up because of the sway bar. Otherwise, you're going to create abnormal tension um, uh, on the control arms, I think. And so that's going to probably cause issues. So we'll get this jacked up, uh, try to get these installed, see if everything works as according to instructions. Uh, and, you know, I won't know for a while whether this actually is a fix. Uh, for the tire wear. I actually haven't looked on it at the tires on a lift, so I'm going to examine them pretty well. I have kind of visualized them from behind, and I'm seeing wear uh, now at 7,000 miles. And these tires should last 20,000 easy. Um, you know, 6,000 miles with just normal highway driving, you know, not going to the drag strip, that's very, or tracking the car is very abnormal. So, uh, and they run about $500 pop, so you're looking at a grand every 5,000 miles for tires. So, this could save you a lot of money uh, in the long run. If you want to spend a thousand dollars, you can get the adjustable links, but then you run into problems with Tesla because if you take it to have warranty issues or anything like that, or you get the track pack brakes, any of those things, you're going to potentially have to return it back to stock or deal with them potentially refusing uh, to warranty your vehicle um, for those items. But all right, so we'll get started. All right, so I was able to. Um, you have to extend far enough to get this up. Uh, got it pretty, pretty close to. Uh, we have to just pop the center cap off on these 21s of Ragnus, which, if you're doing this, you probably have those wheels anyway. Evidently, the 19s don't have really this problem. Take these off. And I've got spacers too, which probably further exacerbates it. You can see it'll make more sense when you see this now so look at the inner tire wear right here so that's where they wear out and so everything else up here looks almost new right and then you get into this inner part and you've got the, all this wear so you can tell that's going to be a bad tire soon um, which is unfortunate uh, because it's only wearing there and everywhere else looks like I've got tons of mileage left uh, so that's what in, in essence what we're fixing so what we're doing as we're installing spacers, I believe right here. And what that's going to do, get a better view of it. Uh, these spacers are gonna go right here. So these two bolts are gonna come out. We're gonna slide the spacers in and that's gonna push everything back out to hopefully fix uh, like a one degree of the camber. So that's gonna be our next step. Okay, so we're gonna get these two bolts off. 16 millimeter, uh, I'm gonna get a longer extension.
the universal on the other one because it's not a straight shot and I can't get my impact in there and I'm lazy I don't want to go in there especially not with the tools so we take this in Okay, so now, uh, let's see what it says. So now we gotta get the spacers in, and then I can adjust the arms. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to have a pry bar, most likely. Uh, let me go grab one of the spacers. It doesn't mention anything Special here, other than uh, easier to roll the shim from the rear to the front. So I'm assuming that means from back here over. So our goal is going to be to somehow slide this in. Uh, I can see why. Yeah, you're going to need separation. So there's going to definitely need a pry bar, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to pry that loose to try to slide that in. So let me get the appropriate tools. Back. All right, so this is like a huge pain in the ass. Um, I got the other side in, but it's a two people job. You have to pry at the brake rotor right here, um, inside here, pulling down to get that to separate. And then you also have to pry here, which takes a second hand. So you really need a third hand to try to manipulate um, the spacer to get in there. I, you know, they don't mention that, but I don't know any other way to do it. It's a big pain in the ass. I've spent like 30 minutes in like a gallon of sweat probably on the other side just trying to get the spacer in. I did get it in, but I want to show you on this side kind of how it works so you have an idea. So one of the tools I use, I use this for the prying area. And then I use right here a big high bar to try to pull the rubber assembly out. I mean, I'm telling you, this is, you literally have to have someone hanging on that non-stop with 150 pounds of pressure or more, or at least weight. Uh, to get that to budge. Now, this is the main. I weigh 100, roughly 170 pounds. I, even on a full, full, I can barely separate that enough. But your goal is to get it behind that.
that uh, your, basically your um, alignment doesn't change. So we'll show you that next. Okay, so you got got them marked here. Tape, gotta loosen these jam nuts. Um, that way you can turn the middle. Three quarters are turned clockwise, so that would be right to the right. So we're gonna loosen this first. There's not a lot of room to work in here, let's be honest with you. Alright, so I'm gonna try to loosen these. <clears throat> Lord. Okay. That one was a lot easier to loosen than the other one. Okay, that's loose. Maybe going the wrong direction with that. Now keep that in a 22 millimeter opening wrench. Okay, it's loose. All right, both of those are loose now. And then now what you're going to be doing in this, since since those are loose, this some center one turns. So it's got to turn three quarter turn clockwise, which would be about to here uh, on the back side. So let's do that. So we're gonna turn this three quarter turn. Oh, that's a 20, by the way. I'm a 20. Oh, you know what? I don't have a 20. Fuck. Uh, let's try an adjustable if I can get it in there. Whatever reason, like all these kits that I have that have um, opening wrenches, they all skip 20. They go 19, 21. I don't know why. We're going to try to use this instead. So we're going to turn it clockwise. Three quarter turn. In hindsight, I probably should use a pen instead of tape. It's whatever. I know where that's at. It's the center of that nut right there. So that we're about a half a turn. I want to put that right there at three quarter. Not sure. Not quite. Still at half down there. So we're gonna go a little further. Okay, right there is three quarter. Okay. Now I gotta tighten the knuckles back. So we'll run these back over. It's back over. It says 50 foot pounds. I don't have a torque wrench for these. So it's just gonna be feel. And then we just hope this doesn't move at all. Let's see. Okay, 
I bet those are doing just jamming that nut so it can't rotate. And supposedly that'll put you back to stock settings. Okay. Alrighty then, that's that. And uh, then we're gonna put the wheel back on and uh, we'll see how she looks, but it'll be the same process on the other side. So we're done. Um, basically a uh, lot harder than I thought. Um, took two people, um, a lot more tools than what it lists. So it lists these things right here, 60 millimeter socket, those four, basic four tools. This is what all I use, uh, not including my impacts. It's not pictured. Um, two different pry bars open in. I mean, it's relatively the same. I've got two extensions. Um, I've got the universal uh, extension. Uh, just make these a little easier, but I hope this fixes all the issues. Uh, I don't know that it will. Um, they, they say it will, it can't hurt. Uh, right now the tire wear is so bad. Uh, I can't imagine that this hurts it at all. Um, so in theory, you know, a tire being $500 a pop, it's been 250 should pay for itself relatively easy and this is the view from the rear and you can already kind of tell uh, it's out more so that when it settles down and i drop it um, they should level out and be more centered so we'll see uh, definitely excited about it and i'm hoping this will fix the inner tire wear so i hope you enjoyed the video i'll talk to you later